The city has been recognized for its well-preserved buildings of modernist architecture designs. As Mara's incredibly attractive architecture has earned it a great value worldwide, making it one of the few in Africa. The people of Eritrea have long said their capital Asmara is like no other city. Asmara was declared as the World Heritage Site during the 41 meeting of the World Heritage Committee in Poland on 8th of July. It is a sign of respect to the city of Vienna. Organizers have managed it that Vienna is the first city to get the privilege of this important and amazing public event on Asmara City of Dreams. The Vienna International Center VIC is the headquarters for several United Nations offices and agencies. Various international conferences and events are held annually at the VIC. We went to meet Mr. Martin Mezerki, former London World Desk Editor, Bureau Chief and Correspondent who served with Reuters in Moscow, Berlin and The Hague. Martin Mezerki has been also the spokesperson for Ban Ki-moon for four years and now he is the Director of United Nations Information Service. So, UNESCO, part of the UN family, has just finished a meeting in Poland, in, in Krakow, and on July the 12th, on Wednesday, not before finishing, they drew up a list, the member states drew up a list of 21 new sites to be added to the World Heritage List. And amongst those three sites in Africa, and amongst those three, of course, Asmara, your uh, capital city, um, famous for its uh, modernist architecture. So this list has uh, a great meaning because it is a way for the world community to recognize important sites around the world, and there are of course many, in different parts of the world, and it's important to recognize those sites that need to be preserved for future generations around the world. Well, the Department of Public Information, uh, which is part of the United Nations Secretariat, has an important role to raise awareness about the work of the United Nations around the world, and that includes in Africa. And this we do through a network of information centers across the continent, but also, uh, of course, around the world in Latin America, in South and Southeast Asia, and of course, uh, here in Europe too. And the aim is, as I say, to help the public, but also non-governmental organizations, the media, to understand even better the work that the United Nations is doing in those three pillars that, that we operate on, of course, peace and security, on uh, development, sustainable development, and on human rights. And all of those three strands, those three pillars, underpin the work that we do, and the Department of Public in of in Information has the job to raise awareness around the world about those activities. It's uh, our designation, you know, uh, as the Horn of Africans, uh, how we call it, journalists or media people or maybe uh, people of the Horn of Africa. So it is, uh, how we call it, uh, it is a pleasure, very big, big pleasure for us, really. And I have very, very deep, good feeling uh, nowadays, you know. So since, you know, we hear the nomination and uh, till the designation came, we had no rest, you know, always thinking about how to celebrate this. And that is why it came that tomorrow we are going to make the big celebration. The Austrian branch of the Universal Peace Federation, United Nations Correspondents Association Vienna, Horn of Africa Peace Initiative, hosted a forum in collaboration with Eritrean permanent representative to United Nations in Austria, Mr. Abdul Qadir Hamdan, and head of Horn of Africa News Agency Horna, Indian Abdul Sharif, at a prime location in the city under the theme as Mara City of Dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome you in the name of the Universal Peace Federation to this also festive event because for Eritrea but also for Europe it's a day to celebrate because uh, we celebrate something which is a cooperation of Europe and 
uh, Eritrea. So today, together with the permanent mission of Eritrea at the United Nations, and I especially recognize Mr. Abdul Qadir Hamdan, together with the United Nations Association of Correspondence and the Horn of Africa Peace Initiative, we are honored to have the chance to organize this event, Asmara City of Dreams, and now a world cultural heritage. Let's give a big applause to all the people who worked for it. Opening the events, Dr. Peter Heider, President of Universal Peace Federation, welcomed the guests and gave briefing focusing on the program, noted the role and responsibility, the importance of Asmara inscriptions onto the UNESCO's World Heritage List, and expressed good wish for the Eritrean delegation. In the opening remarks, Mr. Haptat, again, member of the steering committee and head of the mining engineering department at Eritrea Institute of Technology in Mainafi, stated that the inscriptions of Asmara City under the UNESCO World Heritage List is a symbol of pride and achievement for the Eritrean people and shoulders the responsibility to maintain its status. He said Asmara, the capital city of Eritrea, is a unique and distinct social environment of modern architecture design realized in an African highland setting. The modern buildings that make up the world heritage site of Asmara were built in late 19th and first half of 20th century, known for its well-preserved buildings of modern architecture designs. Asmara is the first world heritage site to be recognized in Eritrea. At the end, Mr. Habtab Tsege called on participants to work for preserving the strong values of the people and government of Eritrea, and looking forward to work together with all their representatives and heads of organization. The first word that comes to my mind is pride and association. And yes, finally, somebody, because you could see from the colleagues that were describing how much work went into this, uh, all the documents that you have to collect, all the work that you have to do, all the data that you have to do. And in Africa, we don't spend time on culture. For us, we consider culture, education, music as part-time, pastime. It's not part and parcel of what we do on a daily basis. So I think it's just the amount of work that it takes to develop and deliver and make a case for something like this is what's so special about this, this project, I think. Engineer Medhani Tekhnamariam spoke about the cultural assets rehabilitation project and the work done with the push of the Eritrean government on self-reliance and increasing of capacity on scanning, planning and digitally scanned the archive, which they described as the richest archive they had come across. Engineer Tisfa Alam Wolde Mikhail further explained the process of the Asmara World Heritage Project and how this would act as a platform for other sites such as Kuhaito, Adulis, Masawa to redress the imbalance created by the failure of the international institutions. On the issue of moratorium, they explained how the Eritrean government made a halt on building for 20 years to give time to understand it and how the Asmara building heritage and the municipality work to legally protect walls, allowing the city to drift and develop. The forum was an important occasion for celebrations and harmony, consolidations of Africa unity, strengthening the African culture and identity, promoting higher mobilizations and organizations, developing African capacity and ingenuity. Asmara, Africa's modernist city, uh, which is recommended by ECOMOS for inscription. Uh, this is a very important step uh, for Eritrea to get this site inscribed, but it's not only for Eritrea, it's for the whole African continent and the whole world to show that modern heritage in Africa exists and that this is really very valuable for the whole world um, to recognize the modern movement. And just to add that um, uh, this is a vision that we have at UNESCO, that heritage is not detached from, uh, from people, from, uh, we are speaking about technical issues, uh, expert issues, but at the end of the day, heritage is about people, heritage is about um, uh, values. I'd also like to thank the Muslim African 
for making us proud. It's, all, it's not very often that good news come out of Africa. It's not often that we gather here to hear sort of like encouraging stories about success. And so thank you for this. Thank you very much for this. And I think I wouldn't be going too far if I say I would like to thank them above on behalf of the whole world in a time when culture and heritage and historical buildings are deliberately targeted in many parts of the world. So in a city which has seen world, 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 war, which has seen conflict, it is encouraging to know that there is an end to that and that peace leads to this kind of project. So again, thank you. Dr. Gerhard Kenas, President of Environmental Concepts Exchange Associations, who made an introductory statement that gave an insight on Eritrea. Another unforgettable moment of the event was the music performance from the Sudanese cultural group. Reside in Austria sent the crowd wild, which witnessed the high level of patriotism of every participant. This is not only Asmara, this is a victory for Khartoum, for Djibouti, for Mogadishu, for Addis Ababa. I hope that uh, not only to look for the victory, but also to look for the responsibilities behind. So really, I hope that we work very hard to make use of this and really to uh, work also in the United Nations goals, which fulfill also our uh, uh, expectations regarding the development in different areas. On the closing remarks, Dr. Peter Heider, president of the Universal Peace Federation, stressed the importance of the forum bringing together from all fields to address and celebrate Asmara City of Dreams and exploring different areas, opportunities of working together towards a sustainable development process in Eritrea and Africa. He also thanked all participants, especially speakers, and those who chaired the sessions on behalf of the organizing committee noting their contribution. Mm -hmm.